hello everybody welcome to the channel my name is Lindsay and this is life with Lindsay today we are going to be working on a whip and chat with the old shoe house from diamond art club if you do not know what a whip and chat is don't mind the crunchy real quick um this is when I work on my work in progress which is what whip stands for and you can either work alongside with me or have me playing in the background or staring at my beautiful canvas, watching the progress being made. However you want to do it, there is no wrong way or right way to whip and chat. So, few boring housekeeping tips. I am recording this at nighttime, so I do hope that my lighting is okay. I have a light pad on, I have an overhead light, I have a desk lamp, and I have another desk lamp. So, we'll see. Um, I'm also recording this while my child is in bed, so if she's not fully asleep yet, you may hear tiny human babbles. The fan <sighs> has broken. I am waiting on Amazon to bring me a replacement, hopefully tomorrow. Although by the time you guys see this, I probably should have already gotten that. So, I think that's it. My husband may or may not come up to the his workstation, which is just that way. And uh, if he does, well, we'll announce him then, right? If you hear any beeping sounds, I do use a timer. So, let's get into it. What color do I want to start with? There we go. Oh, I'm one of those people, by the way, who always needs a light pad. I don't know if it's a sign that my eyes are getting worse or what, but I always need a light pad. So, we are going to start out with this color. This is DMC 890. With the two dots. The vampire bites. I don't know. I totally just made that up. Do you guys name your symbols? Um, this lovely guy always makes me giggle. To me, he looks like a nipple. Or she. I don't really gender my, my drills. Um, anywho. Today was an eventful day in my world. Uh... Well, these don't really want to cooperate, so we're just going to have super messy drills. All right. Let me see where I want to start, and we'll go from there. It's crazy that I can have this many lights on and still feel like I am have trouble seeing, so. Today, we went to the developmental pediatrician. My daughter has been in the process of being evaluated for couple weeks now I guess I'd have to look back to see exactly when it started and we've done three sessions which we were supposed to have three sessions I know one was with a psychiatric I want to say she was a psychiatric nurse practitioner and then I think the other two were both clinical psychologists I don't quote me on that which how would how would you be quoting me because unless you're my husband which, shout out to you, babe. I'm going to leave all of his info down below. Um, if you guys haven't already checked him out, make sure you do so. He's on Instagram at Data Monster. It's D-A-D-D-A -D -D -A Monster. And he makes customized Funko Pops. And if you want to get one in time for the holidays, get those orders in soon. He did announce, um, I want to say today, he announced the last day that I'll be taking orders for the holiday season to get them shipped out in time. Um, and then again, as many of you are aware, he does not control the post office, so once it leaves his hands, that's the best he can do. Anyway, I also, before I get real into this, I don't ever tape off my canvas, but you can see I have it here. Uh, this canvas is massive, like massive, massive. It is 105 by 70, so I just did that so I could cut the plastic so that I could work on a more reasonable area, but it's far too big for me. I should have, you know, taped it off halfway. Anyway, that's not the point. Anyway, it's, <laughs> this whip and chat is off to a great start, you guys. It is uh, big, so you'll see me constantly shifting the canvas to reach the higher ends. Anyway, back to the evaluation. So we had done three evaluations over Zoom, and they had told us in the very beginning if there was any reason to, we could do an in-person evaluation, and they would basically put us in a room with a uh, two-way glass, two-way mirrors, two-way, two-way whatever. I'm not even in frame, am I? There we go. Whoop, something just fell off my table. 
we're going to just keep on moving. Keep, just keep swimming. So we had our third one. I want to say it was like two weeks ago. And at the very end of it, they said to us, you know, we just don't think we've gathered enough information. So we're going to need you to come in. And I'm like, what? So we went in and they put us behind the double-sided glass. Now, when we went in for our last evaluation, um, the location, the, it is a developmental pediatrician and they do all sorts of things. Uh, when I tell people this, they assume that we're going to get my child screened for autism. Nobody has ever suspected her to be on the spectrum. If she is, she is. If she is, she isn't. That's not really what our end goal is. And if you guys have been here and heard anything, my daughter does have some health stuff. I've definitely talked about it before. I talked about her laryngomalacia in the last Whip and Chat. Um, I think I need to change the wax in my pen now that I just started a video. So, you know, there's that. Um... I'm not even waiting until it's like almost done. I'm just going to change it out before I totally lose my train of thought, which I'm pretty sure I've already done. So if you guys could see my desk, Katie, if you're watching this, don't have the anxiety. It's not as bad as it was yesterday. And if you're not Katie and you don't like messy desks, pretend that my desk is totally neat and organized. Um, yeah. Anyway, so... We know something's going on with her. We know for a fact that our kiddo has sensory issues. Now, the DSM, if you're not into, like, any of this medical stuff, I do apologize. I'm not going to go super deep into it, but I'm going to go into it enough to, to get my point across for this whip and chat. But the DSM, which is the Diagnostic Statistic Manual, any disorder, illness, anything is listed in there. They do not recognize sensory processing disorder as a standalone disorder. Typically, especially at her age, it is often associated with uh, autism spectrum disorders. So what does that mean for us? That means that if we know our kid has sensory issues, but she doesn't have the markers for autism, that we're probably going to have to do private therapy sessions that won't be covered by insurance or try to get around it some other way. There are a couple other diagnoses that you can get that SPD would be attached to. Um, I'm not really sure if she would get any of them at her age. Long story short, we know our kiddo is dealing with something. We know some of her craziness, and I say that super lovingly, is just toddlerness. Uh, but we know other things, it it's definitely much, much more than that. Um, a perfect example is our girl has a really difficult time regulating her emotions. Like, really difficult time. To the point that it can affect her for days. And not just like, okay, now I'm over it, let's keep going. Um, she got something in the mail the other day. From a nonprofit organization called Rare Sciences, and they're called Rare Bears. And we qualified for one for her having a diagnosis of laryngomalacia. And what they are, they're handmade bears. They're like memory bears. And the, you, you tell them a couple things your kid's into, colors they like, you know, characters they like, or things they like. And then they put together this bear completely done on a volunteer basis, and they send it to you for free. So we got ours the other day after waiting almost a year. Um, they did shut down because of, obviously, the coronavirus. And if you're watching this in the future, hopefully we've all survived and made it. Woo -woo! Anyway, we got our bear. Um, and like, this is not like a company that sends out tracking, you know, like this is like, it just showed up. Um, and total side note here, if you have a loved one, who does have a rare disease, doesn't have to be anything I'm talking about, they can apply for one as well. Um, but we got ours, and I was so moved because it, like I said, it took 11 months for us to get ours. And we were beyond thankful because this is people who are volunteering their time, and my guess is these are people who are older. And it really just, it means the world to me that somebody took the time to handcraft something beautiful just for my child with my child in mind. And I started to cry and I could see the sheer panic on her face. And, you know, obviously at her age, 
it's hard for kids to understand that there are happy tears and there are sad tears. But most kids, if you explain to them, these are happy tears, mommy's happy, look, and then they smile, the kid will smile back at you and go, okay, and then move on. So I could see she was getting more and more, like, concerned looking. So I gave my husband a hug and I said, look how much, look how much, how, how happy mommy is. And, you know, we love this bear so, so much and it means so much and we love you and you're so special and blah, 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 blah. And next thing I know, you can see the lip starts quivering and you can see her trying to hold back and then tears just streaming down her face. Like, not a little bit, but like streams of tears down her face. And it broke my heart because... I knew she felt bad, and it wasn't something for her to feel bad about, but she couldn't understand. Okay, that's not where the story ends. It took us a day and a half for her to shake that. She was just so distraught. That is not normal behavior. She's a very empathetic child, which, you know, better or worse, whatever, it just... It breaks your heart when you can see that this is something that it should not have gotten to that point, And then I couldn't make it any better. Daddy couldn't make it any better. And for those who don't know, Daddy is like the end-all, be-all. He is the ray of sunshine to her. Mommy is the one who the aggression is directed towards, who the anger is directed towards, who her favorite pastime activity is to sit next to me and just wail on me with her feet. Whereas she wouldn't dare do that to daddy, but daddy's also her life-size jungle gym. So, we've been going through this process. My daughter has been in early intervention since she was, I want to say we started around 15 months. Which, if you have a child who has any issues that are of concern to you, it doesn't need to be developmental delays or speech delays, um... They offer a lot of services. It is definitely something to look into because there's such a stigma with early intervention and it is a free program. Some places call it something different and I don't know if they have this in other countries, but here in the States, um, it is a free program as long as your child qualifies for it and they give you therapists or specialists based off your county and your Specific needs. So our initial uh, reasoning for calling it early intervention was a uh, speech delay. Um, she still is speech delayed. However, she is much more conversational these days. And there's some things she really, she struggles with certain enunciation and things like that. And um, to me, it, it wasn't anything I needed to bat an eye at. It was something that I knew we needed to do. So the whole point of the early intervention program is to make sure that you get your child, obviously you want to intervene early. Um, if you've ever heard them, especially when they talk about things like uh, neurodiverse kids, um, the earlier the detection, the better. You have a, a better chance of putting together a plan in action the earlier you catch it. But the same thing goes with even if it's not, even if there's nothing wrong with your kid, okay? And if you're watching this and not listening to this, sorry, if you're listening to this and not watching this, there were some heavy air quotes with that. Because it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with your kid. Let's just clear that there. But for us, we knew there was a speech issue and the whole point of the early intervention program is, excuse me, to make sure that your child is caught up to their peers by the time they are in a school setting. Now, the next step from early intervention, um, and some places call it a birth to three program. It just, it just depends on what state you live in. Um, but they're all the same thing. And some counties may offer more services than others or different services, I should say. Um, my daughter spent almost two years of her life in feeding therapy and we found out one of our neighboring counties actually offered feeding therapy as part of the early intervention program, but ours did not. So we had to pay for private insurance for that. So anyway, the point of all of this is that we want to make sure that she's she doesn't get lost or fall behind. 
And the early intervention program does a really good job of that. Now, I can't speak for the IU because my child hasn't aged out quite yet. But we are around the corner. So it was recommended to us by our caseworker and our one therapist, well, more than one of our therapists, that we get a full evaluation. And today was, hopefully, the last one of those evaluations. So, I, as I mentioned, my daughter has different behavior for me than for dad, which is totally normal. And um, if you don't know, my husband's been home for quite some time. He did lose his job during the pandemic, not due to the pandemic, but due to the pandemic, it's been hard to find another job that is suitable. So, He's been home with us since March. My kiddo and I have been home since February. Uh, I've left to vote and to go to doctor's appointments with her. And we've seen the grandparents. And that's it. I haven't been to a store or a restaurant since February. And this is not, you know, me garnering sympathy or me trying to spark a debate of parenting skills or anything like that. It's just me simply telling you what I've done to put things into perspective. So for me, they told us we could have one parent join us and we would be put in this bubble. All right, seems fine enough. Um, but which version of the child did we want them to see? Did we want them to see the one that uses her father, physically uses him, to fill up her sensory cups, if you will, or do and use him as a life size jungle gym, or do we want the version of the child who is going to freak out and probably throw every single thing around her and scream and um, be aggressive and not be as nice? Well, I think the decision was clear that we wanted them to see the most accurate version of my child. Because rarely is it ever just my husband and my daughter. Um, so I went and he sat in the car for, by like, as standby, you know, in case we needed to have one of those moments where we called daddy so that she could see daddy on the phone and respond. So we get her up this morning, and it is like one of those days. You ever have one of those days where you wake up, where your kid wakes up, or someone you know wakes up, and you just know right off the bat, this is going to be a shit day? She was <laughs> mad at everything. She didn't want to be getting up. She didn't want to be doing anything. She just was not having it. And I'm like, this is great. We're just setting the tone. So, we had a conversation with her. Um, she is one of those kids that needs prompting and reassuring. You can't just quick pivot change plans without letting her know what's going on. And I'm not saying that in a way that I get her permission or anything. But if I'm going to leave the house, she needs to know that we're going to be leaving the house. I can't just be like, we're going now. Bye. Gotta go. Um, obviously, if there's an emergency situation, I don't really have much of an option, but then I'll deal with the tantrum afterwards. And I had told her yesterday a few times that Thursday, today, this is the day I'm recording it, I'm not sure what I'm uploading this, that we were going to go to the doctors in the morning and that we had to wear our masks and then when we were done, we could come home. So, I have a kiddo who, like I said, hasn't been anywhere in months. And yes, you are seeing me shift around my light pad as well. It's the only way I can make this work unless I recut it. Anyway, so we're just going to keep going with this. So, she knew we had plans. I am sorry. I keep readjusting this, but these drills don't want to cooperate. And I just don't feel like fighting it. So, she knew what she was going to do. She has only ever worn a mask 
once, maybe twice. Um, she's still under the age that they require children to wear masks, but not by much. And um, to her, this isn't her norm. The first time we took her to the doctors during quarantine and everyone had the masks and the doctors had like the shields and everything. She got so scared, rightfully so, because she had never seen anything like that. And um, people whose kids go to the store and go to restaurants and go to the markets and, you know, things like that, they they see this. My child doesn't see this. And um, she was really freaked out. So we, we walked her through it. We talked her through it. And she was okay. So she... Was all excited. Her mask has Mickey Mouse on it. Um, if you guys have kids with really small faces, the Disney masks are great. Uh, I don't know if they're pre-order or ready to ship. Uh, I got mine a while ago, but they work great for her. And she's a peanut. Like, a real peanut. I mean, not a real peanut. She's a human being. But, you know what I mean. Anyway, so we get there. And she's just miserable, miserable, miserable. And I am prepared that this is going to be an awful, awful, awful experience. And we get in, just me and her, and they scanned our temperature, which she was kind of giving them the eye for, but was okay with it. I mean, she had to be okay with it. She didn't have a choice. Second, I put her down on the ground. She tried to run to the other side of the lobby and then proceeded to tell me and the... I don't know if it was a doctor or a nurse that was evaluating us today, but proceeded to tell her, no, we go over here. Nah, kid, we're going where they tell us. This is their building. So we go through the whole process, and they put us in the room, and she explains to me, okay, you're going to have certain toys. Just let her play with these on her own, and if we have anything that we need you to do, we'll just prompt you. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, which, when we did the in-home ones... I had asked, and the first two sessions, um, the first one they told me I didn't need anything. They just wanted to observe her. And the second one, they gave us a list of things that are not my kid's regular, like, she doesn't normally play with fake or play kitchen utensils or bubbles like, bubbles is an outdoor thing. I don't know about you guys, but I don't, I, don't, I don't do bubbles indoors. I like my kid to get her hands into stuff, but I don't like it to be stuff that I'm going to have to be cleaning up for, like, days on end. No, thank you. So, the, the second evaluation, they asked us to have all these things, and I was like, all right. And then she didn't care for any of them because they're none of the toys she plays with. So then the third evaluation, nobody told us, oh, by the way, we needed those toys again. And we didn't have them with us because... They were all packed away because we didn't need them for the last ones we put them away. Anyway, long story, even longer. We get in, and immediately... This is a child who normally takes a really long time to warm up to people. Immediately, she sits right down, totally unbothered by anything, starts playing with the toys. I'm like, okay. And they have her doing some stuff, and then they have me prompting her for some stuff, and then they ask me to help her with some stuff. Like, one was a Buzz Lightyear in a Tupperware container, so we gave her the container and they were talking to me over a microphone or through the phone, whatever it was. They were on the other side of the glass. They could see me. I couldn't see them. Um, and one thing about my daughter is when she gets frustrated, she turns into like full caveman status. Words no longer exist. It is just points and grunts and frustration. And the angrier she gets, the less likely you are to get anything productive out of her. So they said, okay, we want to see if she asked mom for help. And I'm like, oh, crap, of course. So I gave her the container. And then she just looks at me and she goes, mommy. And I go, yes, baby girl. And she goes, open. And I say, what do you say? And she goes, open, please. I said, all right, there you go. And then she was like, thank you. I'm like, oh, this baby is being so sweet today. Tell me why this kid was perfect. Okay. Like <sighs> the sweetest, most angelic, most non B B that ever could exist. Um, and if you guys don't know, B is what I call her. Um, the first letter of her name 
So you'll often hear me refer to her as B. Um, whoop. I just popped that one right out. Let's see if I can get that without making too much of a mess here. All right, let's put you down here so I can pick you back up. Where the hell did it come from? There it goes. So I'm like, all right, maybe this, this will, maybe this, she'll do something that shows her true behaviors at home. So she did something that got her really upset. And instead of like being mad about it, she's like, that's okay. What? Who are you? Normally, her immediate instinct is to throw. She throws everything. And when I say she throws everything, you know when babies are learning how to like sit in a high chair and eat food and things like that and all they want to do is throw? We've never outgrown that stage. Ever. Um, a lot of it has to do with the sensory stuff. A lot of it may also be behavioral based. But for her, the pressure of the joint... so. Total crash course in senses. We all grew up thinking we have si five senses. There's actually eight senses. And the three that we don't talk about are the three that most affect kids who have sensory issues. So for us, we deal with vestibular and proprioceptive issues. Um, I'm not going to get super in-depth because I know if you have no idea what I'm talking about, it's probably super boring. I mean, for all I know, all of this whip and chat is super boring for some people. Hopefully you are enjoying it, and you're enjoying the sweet, dulcet tones of my voice. Um, totally a joke, by the way. I know some people do enjoy my voice, which blows my mind. Um, but hey, if you do, thank you very much. And if you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not really, can't do anything about it. But anyway, one of the things, and it kind of works for both of those senses, is the movement and compression of joints. So, things like weighted vests and compression garments exist and help in some of these ways. But actually, the action of throwing the movement like that and like that, that's also something that helps her, even though it drives us crazy. But a lot of times, she just does it out of frustration and anger. So, I was like, oh, crap, here we go. She's going to throw. Nope, didn't throw it. I'm like, are you kidding me? Not one of her single typical everyday behaviors was was shown not one and they even said to me uh, how often do you think she gets frustrated it and i'm like in a day all day she lives in a world of frustration which if you think about that that sucks and pair it with and partially because she has a speech delay she has trouble communicating what her needs and wants are but it goes further than that because of some of the sensory issues that we are dealing with. She doesn't recognize in herself certain things like being hungry, being thirsty, being tired, having to go to the bathroom. So when is my kid asking me for food? When she is screaming because she's in hunger, in like severe hunger, because her body isn't telling her. You, a typical person, throughout the day, your body's saying, hey, Lindsay, you should put something in your belly. Make that growling go away. Lindsay, you should eat a little bit. So her body is going, B. Nothing. Until it's like, oh my God, B, put something in your system. You are starving. And that's when she freaks out about it. And when she wants something to eat, she wants it right then and there and not in a toddler being demanding kind of way but like a I cannot control this and if you have never witnessed a true sensory meltdown which I hope that you never have to um, there is a very distinct difference between a meltdown and a tantrum no matter how bad the tantrum is tantrums have a desired outcome Sensory meltdowns do not. Um, it can start off because there was something. But for us, when she has a meltdown, I've got to readjust my light pad again. Um, she, the way I describe it, and this is just for my child. And again, I have zero medical expertise. I just know what my life 
as her mom is like. So the way I describe it, and I describe this to the, the psychologist and the social worker, I, to everybody that would listen to me, when she's having a tantrum, she's just having a tantrum. And she can have a tantrum that is long and never-ending. Like, we had one where we were on the first evaluation, actually, and she threw herself on the floor and screamed for 30 minutes, and the only thing she could say was pink straw. I don't know why. And she didn't want the pink straw. We offered it to her. And every time we offered it to her, she would throw it. So obviously it wasn't about the pink straw. Fast forward to my husband finally being like, okay, I've got to succumb to something. Let's try to give her her food. Now this is after we had offered her food. I don't know how many times, but it finally clicked. She scarfed down two bags of pitos, which are Cheetos that are plant-based. Um, they're actually really good. Not a plug. But, um... The fiery onion, if that's your thing, they're really good. But uh, she ate that, and then she ate a bunch of fruit and just, like, scarfed it down like she hadn't eaten in years. This is a child who couldn't convey to us anything. So when she has an actual meltdown, it's like her spine was attached to a string, and somebody pulled it, and just all the bones collapse, and she just collapses on the floor into a puddle, and then when you go to pick her up, her body locks and she gets super rigid. Now, these are things she can't control. She's doing it over and over and over again, but she's not doing it intentionally. It's not something with authority. And I apologize. I'm sure that's probably not fun watching me move this all over the place. But um, kind of is how it's happening. So, And they witnessed that on the first. So I'm wondering when they look at the notes for this, are they going to be like... Wait a minute, this kid did none of these behaviors. So, anyway, she was unbelievably not herself today. And don't get me wrong, I she's not a monster, and she's not this terrible kid. She has moments like she had today, but most of her time, it is... Happy moments surrounded by frustration. And today it was frustration literally all day except for that time frame. And then let me tell you, have you ever seen those posts when people say, this is the dumb reason my toddler was crying today? Well, ours happened the second we got outside. So we got outside, going to go walk to the car. And what does she do? Okay, well, now she's mad. So now she's throwing a temper tantrum. What is she throwing a temper tantrum about? Because she wanted to walk. Girlfriend, how do you think you got outside? She walked outside. So, she's throwing herself on the floor. We're trying to convince her, please get up. We need to get you in the car. We need to go home. And that was just like the beginning of the end. The rest of the day was just horrendous for us and her. And it was like, anything that could go wrong went wrong. Well... Well, this is all happening. I didn't notice anybody else because I was trying to get my kiddo into the car. And she likes to do this fun game of the uh, delaying the inevitable. So she'll ask for mommy to put her in the car. And then when mommy comes over, I want daddy. Come on, kid, we know what you're doing. So we're getting her in the car, and we drive off. We went to go to a Dunkin' Donuts because I desperately needed a cup of coffee, and uh, I wanted a donut, and um, that's what we got. So I come home, and I log on to Facebook. Now, I will link all of this down below, um, and I will do my best to insert... A photo or two but I am part of a VIP group on Facebook for a company called Scars and Gems now if you don't know what Scars and Gems are they sell mama sacks you don't have to be a mama to have one um, and they are these gorgeous bags that a lot of moms use as diaper bags again don't have to be a mama and they say the word mama on it 
you can change those letters to something else. I have too many drills in here for this to work. And I see a post that says, I'm hoping this mama is in here. I saw you today. And she named the location. And you were wearing your mama sack. And you had on your wolf and scamp dino spikes. I'll also link them down below. And I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, she's talking about me, she's talking about me. It was 100% me. So I got so excited because I've always wanted to spot a sack in the wild, and I've never done it. And if you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, these are absolutely, absolutely, absolutely amazing. And again, this is not sponsored, this is not an ad, I'm not a rep for them, I just truly love their products. She also does other things, um... She does crystals and um, pins, and I, I can't even describe the amazingness, but these bags, it's a denim backpack. The one I'm talking about is a denim backpack, and I paid for what's called the one-of-a-kind, which is one-of-a-kind, and you write in there your blurb or things about you, things you like, things you don't like. She said she's had as little as one sentence, and she's had as much as, like, an essay. And my mama sack, if you know me, it it suits me very well. Um, Cookie Monster is my spirit animal. He's on there. I've got a taco on there. I've got a dinosaur on there. I've got so many cool things on there. She made me a light blue awareness ribbon because of my daughter's Laringo Malaysia. There's so many amazing things on this bag. And while I'm over here putting the tiny human in the car, somebody is spotting me. Um, so, hi, Allie, if you're watching this. Um, I did reach out to her and I said, hey, I was the one. And she is going through the evaluation process as well with her son. And they were on their first meeting and I am potentially on my last. And I say potentially because they told me, if they need more info, they will call me. And I'm like, I don't want to do another evaluation. The whole point of us doing this evaluation is because we wanted to get answers before we transferred into the IU. But also, and I think a lot of people don't know this, if your child or even an adult, if they get diagnosed with certain things, um, they can actually qualify for Medicaid, Medicare, whichever the one is. Um, I always confuse the two. So that means that we could potentially have therapy services provided to her in a capacity that is beneficial to her. Now, right now, we have once weekly occupational therapy virtually, which if you haven't done virtual therapy with a two-year-old, nonetheless, um, it's productive to an extent and then it's it's about as good as it's going to get it's a lot of me basically conveying things or my husband and you know trying to get my kid to do whatever it is that we're asking of her which is a difficult feat in its own anyway we did oh my goodness i am just i need to my nail polish off. These are popping out because I didn't put them down. Um, so I'm hoping that this is the last one. And then they, we have to wait a month now to get the results. And while I am at the end of my evaluation process, this girl who spotted me in the wild, uh, she's just starting hers, even though she's been on this journey and advocating for her child. Uh, for quite a while as well. But it was really nice to talk to someone who understood the exact journey that I was on. Because while they're suspecting different things for her son than they are for my daughter, we're both going through the process at the same doctor's office at the same time. Um, and who knows what our results will be. Um, my suspicion is with my daughter that they're not going to come back with an official diagnosis of anything but that they're going to see markers for things we do have a couple things in our family history that we we see behavior that is concerning um 
but I don't know if they've witnessed it or if it's something that they are as concerned as I am or my husband is. Um, so we'll, we'll just see. We're just waiting. But we were able to connect through the power of Facebook, which is unbelievable. And we live, you know, semi-close to each other. So I'm hoping that we can actually form like a real life friendship outside of COVID. And that would be amazing. I have some people who I talk to through Instagram who understand a lot um, about what I'm going through. For one reason or another, they have a kid who's on the spectrum or who's neurodiverse or um, a family member who's been through a lot of the same things. And it's just really, really wonderful to have people that you can talk to about things because not everybody has that person who's dealt with this. And as a mom of a medically complex kiddo, there's nothing more, sorry, this, I'm going to get choked up here. Um, there's nothing worse than feeling completely alone. And I know I'm not completely alone because I have my husband and, you know, I have you guys, which I'm so, so grateful for uh, this YouTube community and the Instagram community, especially for the diamond painting. Um it's just gotten to the point that, you know, my husband and I have found our circle who understand the things that we're going through, who understand the lingo, who understand the terms. You know, if you have never dealt with aspirating on thin liquids, for example, when I'm talking to you about different thickening agents, your eyes are going to glaze over because you're like, what? And it's not... A harsh thing or a mean thing or something with ill will it just happens to be something that is part of our vocabulary that we know isn't part of everybody else's and you know it's it's fine um it is very isolating if you have a child with any kind of medical issues it doesn't have to be uh Anything I'm relating to. If you have a kid who requires physical therapies or a kiddo who has heart disease or, you know, anything, anything, you need to find your people. You need to find your tribe, whether it is in real life or online and find those people who make you feel like you're not alone. And for anyone who is ever curious, we will always promote and fundraise for Coping with LM because that's where our community lies. And I will um, leave all the information down below for Coping as well. Um, if you guys are ever interested in hosting a fundraiser drive or if you want to just donate um, there are specific items that they need for their care packages, or if you prefer to donate money instead of products, they have that as well. Um, you can always reach out to me. I know I said, um, like 8 billion times, but I'm trying to get my thoughts together here. But we will be participating in a panel, uh, later this week, actually. And we will be sharing our experiences, and I know... That my husband and I have uh, very different experiences than a lot of other families because our child was diagnosed as having a mild form of the disease. And most people who have a kiddo that's mild just outgrows it and has no issues. But that, unfortunately for us, was not the case. So, um, just grabbing a couple more colors. These are the big ones. And I do have a cute little Amazon haul coming up for you guys soon. I'm just waiting. Am I waiting on one thing? I can't remember if I'm waiting on something or not. Um, ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba. I realize I have a whole chunk of this letter that I forgot. And uh, so, yeah, that was how our day went. And if you've been following along, whether it's here or on Instagram, which if you don't follow me on Instagram, all the info 
for my Instagram. And I do have a Facebook group as well. That is all in the info box or the description box or, yeah, whatever it's called, the down below. And I would love to connect with you. Um, mum, 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 mum. If you are not a diamond painter and you somehow got to me for some other reason, connect with me anyway. I'm more than just a diamond painter. Clearly, I'm also a mom and someone who talks a lot. So if either one of those things are relevant to your interests, hit me up. <laughs> uh, so our day continued to just go and be crap, like to the point that this feels like one of those days that you just drink the wine straight out of the bottle or the liquor, whatever it is that your drink of choice is, if, if you are drinking, um, which I'm not drinking. I'm sitting here diamond painting and, and bullshitting with you guys, and I absolutely love it, and I hope that you do too. Um, Halloween is around the corner. I'm excited and nervous about that. We're not going to be trick-or-treating this year, which <sighs> breaks my heart. Um, for safety reasons, we're just not going to do it. And it sucks, but it is what it is. And look at me trying to put this color away. I don't have a pill grinder. Um, my husband's about to walk in, so if you guys hear the door open... Ta-da! Right on cue. Say hi, husband. Hello. So, we are probably, if I have to guess, going to dress her. She has a really cute handmade Minnie Mouse polka dot dress and really cute ears. We'll probably just put her in that. She won't know the difference that it's a costume or an outfit or whatever. But we'll know and we'll be like, this is super cute. Which, I, I feel like I say that every time I get her dressed. And... If you guys are interested in seeing her outfit, she also has her own Instagram. <laughs> yes, my toddler has an Instagram. Um, if you already follow me on, if you're friends with me on Facebook, then you will know I don't share my kiddo's image. So me saying that she has an Instagram, it's literally just of her flat lays. But if you like cool kids fashion and handmade clothing, um, totally feel free to follow her. Um... Yeah, so, we are happy that she is now in bed, and we are what? We're 47 minutes into this, you guys, and I haven't heard a peep from her, so that's a good sign, right? Okay, you ever have that moment where you think you put enough drills in, Ugh. and then you do that, and you're like, now I have too many drills. I need in-between size trays. Like, I love this tray but I don't need it for everything all the time um and I did have somebody ask me did you put duct tape on your tray this is painter's tape and yes I did it's on the underside so it sticks to the bottom and I put it there because as I mentioned earlier I've got really terrible eyes and because of that I was having a difficult time with the drills, with the light pad coming through it. I was having trouble seeing them. And so I bought myself a darker tray, like one of the 3D printed ones. And then I found I had the other problem that I couldn't see the drills. So I don't really have a happy medium. Like the white one works fine for me, but uh, I don't know. I really want to get like another cool small shop tray but I don't know what color to get because I want it to be pretty obviously I want it to be functional but I want it to be something that I can utilize which you know my own fault that I have terrible eyes I guess <laughs> when my husband and I were pregnant well when I was pregnant I guess my husband wasn't actually pregnant um Unless there's something I don't know about him. And we were talking about genetics. We always said our kid is going to have a great head of hair and terrible eyes. Because my husband and I are both blind. He wears glasses. 
I live in my contacts. I'm one of those people that I, I really struggle to function when I have to wear my actual glasses. And I've had friends who've known me for years who've never seen me in person with my glasses. I have one friend who sees me post every once in a while on, um, like, social. She's like, you should wear them more often. And I'm always like, get out of here. <laughs> I love you, Jen. You're probably not watching this, but I love you. And, uh... She's also thrilled because she's turned our child into a crazy cat lady. Which I'm going to have to be that mom that like breaks her heart because I am super allergic to cats and dogs and rabbits. And right now our girl is, to say she's obsessed with cats is like an understatement. She has this plush cat, oddly enough, that my friend Jan got her when I was... I don't remember if it was when I was pregnant or right after I delivered the baby. But she has this cat and when she gets distraught about something or upset about something or frustrated, she, the kitty cat's so cute. And then she'll rub on the kitty cat, like put it against her face and pet it. And kitty cat's so cute, mommy. And it's like nobody said it wasn't cute, kid. <sighs> She's an interesting character, our child. But she's going to be really mad at me when she gets older. And she asked mommy and daddy for an animal. And my husband's probably not going to break her heart. So he's going to probably be, blame mommy. Which I, I don't blame him because it is my fault that we're not going to have an animal. Also, I don't like cats. I'm sorry if you're a cat person. <laughs> I, I have been allergic to them for so long. But they're also like creatures that lurk. And they know when you don't like them. And they, I don't know. I mean, I, I wish no ill will on cats. Let's get that, let's get that out in the open. But, uh, I'm definitely a dog person, also allergic to dogs. So we went and visited my father-in-law the other day and he has a dog and the dog wasn't even in the house and I forgot to take an allergy pill and my eye by the time we left was like swollen shut. So, but yeah, so that's how our day went. Let me know down below, how did your day go? Anything exciting happening in your life? Um, I don't know when this is going up, but it's almost the weekend, which really makes no difference if you're still quarantining because there are no days. There's just yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, with that being said, it's probably a good stopping point for us here, huh? I want to thank you guys all for watching. And um, I really do appreciate each and every one of you for your likes, your comments, when you share it on social media. It does mean so, so much to me, and it really, really, really warms my heart when I see people genuinely interested in my content and what I have to say or what they want to hear from me, which if you guys have anything specific that you guys would like to see here on this channel, please let me know down below. Um, as long as I can make it happen, I will. I will say I... Will only be featuring licensed artwork, so please don't ask me to check a company that is known for lots and lots of stolen art. Um, that's just an ethical thing, and also I don't want my channel shut down, um, which can happen. Yay, copyright strikes! But as I have said before, and if this is your first time to a uh, Life with Lindsay video, hi, welcome, I hope you stay. Um, I don't upload on a schedule. I operate on toddler standard time. I try to get things in when she is sleeping or when she is sleeping. So I record when I can, however I can, and I upload whenever I can. So make sure while you guys are here, you give this video two thumbs up, one real life, one virtual. Make sure you hit that bell so that you don't miss any time that I upload. And subscribe to the channel. We want you here. Come, stay. Let's be friends. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!